Hello again and welcome to the Franchise Everything podcast where we talk about everything and anything franchising. And today I'm in Melbourne with Tim Collett, the Managing Director of Specialised Events who run the Franchising and Business Opportunities Expo. Is that correct? That's exactly right, Glenn. Every time I call it the Franchise Expo, you always correct me because <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be business opportunities. So now this is an important one. We've, we've talked about this sort of stuff for years. Um, but this is what this little one's about. This little podcast here is going to be about how to exhibit and get the absolute most out of a franchise expo as an exhibitor. Absolutely. And, and you know what, Glenn, uh, you do it well and a lot of the exhibitors do it well, but, but not everyone. And a few simple tricks, just changing the way we do things, they won't necessarily cost you more money, but just doing things uh, methodically and, and knowing knowing how to get the most out of a show can make a massive difference. It could double your return on a show. To- totally. And, well, you know, let's not mix words. Everyone who goes to a show wants a return on investment. So they're investing significant amounts of money. They are. If you're bringing a team, you're bringing people, you've got travel, you've got accommodation, you've got food. It's not just the stand, is it? It's normally That's right. a lot more Look, than the stand. You know, they're a significant investment of time and money. Yep. And you need to you need to you need to take it seriously and you need to do a little bit of work to make sure you do get that return. And and we can talk about a few things today. Simple tricks, simple things to do that will actually transform your results. Excellent. All right. Let's get into it. Let's go from the first start. So where do we start then when we're looking at a franchise? Well, look, you know, if you're going to start, have a look at the shows around and, and book early. You know, there's no point booking late. If you're going to do the show, book it early. And that means you've got a, a good selection of sites. It means you can uh, ask lots of questions. It means you can have a lot of time to get organised. So we know we, we set these shows up at least a year in advance, if not longer. So... Have a look at what shows are on, you know, next year, and 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 book early. Not only not only can you book early for the show, but then you can start thinking about accommodation and staff and all yeah. those other things. And the earlier you book, the, the better. Get, so there's nothing to be gained by waiting. Yeah, and I, and I think so. From my perspective, in in looking at that, what I see is, and it's actually quite common to a lot of franchise recruitment marketing is it's quite reactive. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot. Yeah. It's probably a lot of the larger brands who've got bigger corporate structures and more yeah. more team members have got a lot of plans in place where a lot of the smaller brands I've noticed over the years, because we've worked with many, many brands over the years, are quite reactive in their actions and you see this. And um, the, the, the plan would be obviously to put franchising expos as part of their marketing mix within that recruitment plan. Well, ideally, yes. And then shows really work well with other marketing as well. Yeah. So your online marketing, um, your your own conferences, your own your own uh, meetings and gatherings, you know, build them around the show. And and then you can plan the whole year. I, I can all, you know, already now, you know, the Sydney show will be in May and the Melbourne show will be in August. So now you can start planning for yep. it and you can book in now and you've got lots and lots of time yep. to plan. Our comms already booked next year already. Booking.com. Oh, really? <laughs> your accommodation's already booked. Uh, that's, that's the way we do it. It's and airfares now. So, so yeah. you know, you can book up, you know, you can book airfares early, you know, maybe not 12 months, but certainly, no, certainly, certainly uh, you know, give yourself some time. Um, in, in some industries, you know, there's different shows. So you want to look around for the right show. In franchising, there is only one. Yep. So it's pretty straightforward. Makes it pretty easy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, um, you know, that next step is, is start planning for it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, from my perspective, being prepared. So yeah. being prepared for show, what, 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 are the, what are the things you need to check off to be prepared to make sure you're turning up there with, with the, the best a chance of making a good return on investment. Yeah, so planning, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm probably still a bit old school. I like to print things out and put them in a folder. Create a folder, um, you know, Franchising Sydney, and put, you know, put your, put your stand floor plan in there and, and put the times in there. And then when, when you do book airfares and accommodation, put them in there. Start thinking about which staff you're going to take to the show. And then, then have a think about how you're going to set up the stand. So we'll, we can come back to how you set up yeah. the stand. But I guess the point here is, is start thinking about it early and start putting those plans in place. And um, it's also a good time to start thinking about um, objectives. Yeah, I, I was about to say the same thing. I mean, the number one thing I think that comes to mind for me is like, what, what, am, I, what am I trying to achieve? Yeah. What do I want to achieve out of this show? What does success look like? Yeah, and every show is, is all shows are different, different industries, you know, there might be different objectives. Come back to the franchising shows, uh, is, it, is it to find a... A master franchise is it to find individual franchisees, um, and and more than that, is it to just start people on the journey? Yeah. Um, is or is uh, it brands tell me some brands say we're we're doing it for brand awareness, or is it so brand we've awareness? We've got to be seen. We and have that's to be okay. seen here. Yeah, it, you know, every so often McDonald's will do the show because they just want people to know that they're a good community member and part of the franchise. And they're not industry. Pati- they're not 
But McDonald's doesn't strike me as the type of brand who's finding franchisees at franchise shows walking in the door. Well, they have done the show actually in the but past. But many years but ago the, now, but, but at this stage now. Reasons. Yeah. I think they do it um, just to show that they're, you know, they're part of the franchise industry. Or yep. they might have, um, a few years ago, they came out with a new model, which is a, sh- a smaller store format. Okay. Well, they might be pushing into new regions and, um, you know, think, is it what region do you need to grow? Where do you have franchises? So where, mm. do, you want, where do you want to be? And, and the objective might be to get a certain number of leads in a certain... Yep. You know, a certain region, it might be to um, you know um, set up. Um, you might want to get people to come to a seminar after the show. Yeah, I'm seeing. I'm actually seeing a lot more of that. So the brands that mm. that we're talking to at those events are trying to do marketing, even with our other business doing marketing yeah. in franchise buyer, doing um, lead generation through yeah. our channels to get people to the show, yeah. but also to promote for the events and the seminars for yeah. the week after the but show. Minuteman Press do an amazing job of that. They'll get on the phone and they'll organise. Yep. They'll get get to all the leads and organise a uh, get-together, you know, the week after the show. Um, so there's a few ways you can do it for objectives. So objectives can be different. It's not just, oh, mm. let's just go there and see what happens. You know, I want, I, and you can also set targets there. You know, I, I want to get, you know, I want to get 20 or 30 leads. If you haven't done a show before, it can be hard to know. But if yeah. you've done a few shows, you go, right, well, we really want to get, we want to get 30 good leads. That's 15 a day um, that we want to get. And those leads are people that we, we want to have a, a follow-up interview with. By doing that, it sort of helps the planning in a way because you need to, then you know how I'm going to set up the stand, what material am I going to have, how many people will I have on the stand to to achieve that objective, um, and and I think that's that's it's it's kind of boring, but it's kind of important. It's true. It's like setting up that stand really comes down to what messages what messages you're trying to convey according to the objective that you have. Absolutely, yeah. and um, and then it does come back to to stand design and, and what imagery yeah. you want, and you know what messaging or something I'm. I'm going to say about stand design is you need to be really obvious. Mm. Um, what 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 are you selling or what are you offering? What what is what is your brand image and what do you want people to do? And it can be as, as obvious as putting up a sign, you know, franch- franchisees wanted, or we need people in yeah. in the Rockhampton it's, area, or we need. Mm, it's interesting it you really say that obvious. because you, you, I do laps and laps and laps. I walk about 15 k's a day. I think at expos. Mm. Um, it is, you do see a lot of people standing back from stands looking at it and then just saying those words, what do you what do? do you do? Yeah, what do you do? Yeah, if someone's saying, what do you do? That's, yeah, you that's a problem. probably a problem. But, yeah. you know, you walk past a gym's mowing stand and you see a, a mower yep. and you see a big picture of gym. Yeah. You know exactly what they do. Now, that's pretty obvious because most people know of course, that brand. Yeah. But some other brands um, are not so obvious. The, the uh, Like you know, concrete cutter, for example. You yeah. see the concrete cutter machinery sitting there with a bit of concrete there and saying, we do concrete cutting and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, graffiti yeah. eaters, they have a van there yeah. and, and and it's pretty obvious. So that's that's a great thing to do. So being obvious is really important. Um, yeah. That That's that's sort of stand design. I'd say before we even get to the show, um, some other things you want to do is, is to let people know you're going to be at the show. Yep. So pre-show promotion. Your existing I, database. Your existing database. Yeah. I, I know it's our job to promote the show, but exhibitors should promote the fact that they're in the show, and that's for a few reasons. One is because they might have a lot of people at different stages of their journey. They've just started thinking about a franchise or they're towards the end of the journey, but they, they, want, they, they need a little bit of a kick along. And so by telling people you're at the show, it creates – a timeline and a little bit of urgency. It shows you're active. Mm. It shows you're serious, and it's 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 a great opportunity to say, "Hey, come and see us in Sydney or in Melbourne, and uh, and and have a chat, to, have another chat to us about yeah, to progress someone further down the path that they might have only had a phone call or an email yeah. inquiry with." And the funny thing, franchises sometimes say to us, "Well, I don't want to see all the other franchises." Yeah, I hear that sometimes too. Well, they're going to see them. What? They're going to see them anyway. They're going to look. Yeah, and people are going to. People are going to have a look before they make a final decision yeah. and actually getting to become a look at those other franchises is a way of getting them to make a decision. Yeah. So don't see that as a negative. Um, use it. Use the show to say, look, you've looked at all the others. Ours actually, from, ours actually is the best mm. and it's really going to suit you. And, and I think that comes to what you just said, really important, I think, because I've, I've thought about this a lot. It comes down to, well, do you back yourself and your system or not? Yeah. Am I... At, yeah. Or do I actually have some underlying concerns about, geez, are we actually good enough? Do we stack up well again? If you yeah. know in your heart of hearts that you stack up well against those other guys, then no what's problem. the problem? You have no problem, do you? Then your wowing personality mm. and your great culture mm. is going to win that person over and you're going to get yeah. them closer to the line. And, you know, you walk into Bunnings, you're not going to buy the first mower you see. You're going to have a look. Yeah. 
and then you're going to choose the best one. And you're right, believe in yourself and get them to show. It just shows, it shows you're active too. It shows you're yeah. serious and it shows you're real because so much advertising promotion now is online. Yep. Anyone can do a website. Yeah. Um, you, you don't know you don't know real, but when you see a real brand with real people, and often exhibitors will have franchisees on the stand that you can talk to. Yep. It's a great I've thing seen, to do. Seeing a lot more of that more recently. Love that. You've done it for years. Has it been a thing in past really to see to have franchisees, franchise owners on stands? Look, I haven't seen it over many years, it but comes and goes. I think it's a great thing when it happens. Yeah. And it does show confidence yep. that your franchises franchisees will speak positively about the brand. And people want to share and know that. Again, they're going to, they should do it before they make a decision mm. and it, it leads them to that that end decision. So pre-show promotion is important and how do you do it? Well, we all have news, well, most of us have newsletters or we have social media streams. Put it on your, put it on your Facebook, put it on your LinkedIn. Um, your signature block on your email. Put on your signature block on your mm. email. Yes, yeah, see us at the franchising show. Yep. And if I, if I see an email from someone at CS that XYZ show, I thought, oh, look at them. They're, they're active. They must be a really good company. Mm. Uh, that applies to any industry. Most of these tips do. Yep. Yeah. I used to say put it on your invoice. People don't tend to send out invoices anymore. But um, send out free t- We We have hard copy tickets still. Yep. You can send those out. We also give people soft tickets, which are, have your stand number on it. Shoot it out. Mm. In fact, now we, we actually have an incentive. The person that brings the most visitors, we give them a free stand the following year. That's great. Which, which is great because we want it. Yeah, it's good yeah. for everyone. Yeah. Well, if multiplied by 100, 100 exhibitors, exhibitors, yeah, it's yeah, a it lot. makes a difference. That's a lot of exposure for the um, for the expo. Yeah. So um, but getting close to the show, um, obviously you're thinking about all the mechanics of it. You're going through your exhibitor manual. You're, you're ordering you're ordering your exhibitor badges. You're maybe giving the organiser some some information for their social media so we can help to promote you. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want some graphics, you're ordering all those things well in advance. Yeah, because there's no there's no advantage I, waiting. No, I know it well. The mad scramble three days. And Jono, who's filming behind there, has seen it seen us before <laughs> scrambling like crazy before an expo. I've got to go to the printer and pick up this stuff. It yeah. makes it a very painful experience. Give yourself some time. Yeah. Um, things aren't that time sensitive that you can't get them produced. That's true. And look, I know these things. I do the same. You know, we, we exhibit ourselves at the franchising, at the FCA yeah. conference. Yeah, you do. And I've got to say, I've been guilty of a week before <laughs> saying. We've got those brochures. We've got those brochures. Yeah. Have we got business cards? Yeah. Oh, do we need to get a, a poster made? <laughs> yeah. Um, when's the move in? Yeah, yeah, checking all those times. Have we got an exhibitor manual? Yeah. So I, I you know, I, I know there's higher priority things. I'm just saying push yeah. it back a month and plan for, and start planning for it then and get some of these things done. There's high priority things. Be, there, there are, but you want that return on investment because when you when mm. you come to it and you're organised and you're, yeah. you've got everything and under you're control, not you're, you're not, not stressed. stressed. It's a much easier event. And something to do too, that those few weeks before a show, um, pull your team together, the people you're going to take to the show. And now I know franchising show, often it's only two people. Yep. Um, yeah, maybe three people, even sometimes it's one. But if it's two or three people, get together a week or two before the show, sit down and talk about the things that we've just talked about. Why are we doing a show? What are our objectives? Yep. What are the plans? Where are we staying? When are the flights? What do we want to say to people? Yeah, get a script. Get a script or practice yep. a script. Um, that, you know, Sales 101. And this is super important Go back. and a lot, don't, a lot won't do it. Yeah. Won't have a script. They'll just say almost more important than the, stand design. Exactly. They'll just say, people. Hey, how are you going? And they just have a chat. What are you looking for? Yeah. But no, it's yeah, really plan out a script about where you want them to go and what information you want to give them. Yeah, open ended questions. Yep. Um uh, you know, get a um what sort of business do you think you might be interested in? Yep. Uh have you heard about our brand before? Have you ever been to a Rache's? What do you think of the what do you think of the food there? Where's your where's your favorite where's your favourite outlet? Yeah. You know? How often do you go to the coffee club? Do you know the coffee club? Well, as as an independent third party, because we we're not selling any franchise in particular at all these events, we've I've had thousands of people come and talk to me over the years at them, yeah. and pretty much the question they always ask is, "Oh, what's a good franchise?" Yeah, this is the straight question they ask. What's a good franchise? Yeah, they really don't know. They so don't they're waiting. They're waiting to be impressed. They want to, They want you to talk to them. Yep. you're there to talk to them. You're paid to talk to them. So talk to them. Yeah, don't be. Don't stand back and and and. This is a little bit hard for staff because this is cold calling. It's probably not what they do every day. Yeah, I, I think you're, you're actually that's reminded me of something there. I think putting the right people on expos is key. Mm. So um, if you are even the recruitment person but your strong suit is not, hey, how are you going and being right in front of people and mm. re- being a quite an extrovert, yeah. then you as the lead person greeting people is probably not 
your thing. Not necessarily. I would probably yeah. get. I'd probably get, a, get an extroverted greeter to greet people, yeah. welcome people, warm people, and they will just yeah. go all day like that. Yeah. Um, it's natural to them and it won't drain them. Where you, it'll drain you. It'll drain yeah. you by 12 o'clock. You'll be done. Look, it, it, it can. It can. We don't always have the choice of lots of staff, in which case a bit, of training, on, a bit can, of training will help. Give them training. Grab one on Fiverr. Grab some casuals. Do you whatever. Do I see people grabbing casuals and having yeah. a casual there just to greet and bring people yeah. in. That's certainly a very Franchi- cost-effective way to do it. Franchisees. Bring, we'll in franchisee. Franchisee. bring in a franchisee. 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 Franchisee.
it'll only take them two or three seconds to walk past a three meter by three meter stand. Now, in that two or three seconds, you've got to grab them. Hmm. So a big image on the back wall of a coffee cart, if you sell coffee carts, if, if they're interested in a coffee cart, they will stop. If they're interested in a bookkeeping service and you've got an image which is appropriate to that, they will stop. But if they don't know what you do, if it's just a blank wall and trestle with some brochures on it. Um, or if they have to ask to find out, they likely ask, won't. Yeah. It can be really obvious. You can put a, put a sign on the wall that says, you know, um, do do you want do you are, are you are you interested in running a bookkeeping service? Mm. Yes, <laughs> I'll yeah. stop and I'll talk. Totally obvious. Yeah, be obvious and be professional. Don't don't spend a fortune on furniture. In fact, try not to have chairs on your stand because if you put chairs on your stand, staff will sit down. Yeah, that that's Am I no, mean? that's it's a challenge. I mean, I, I I when I walk past these things and I see and I come across people. Generally, the people who complain about there's not enough attendees, mm. it hasn't been good for me, whatever, yeah. are generally sitting on a a chair in the back of their stand yeah. on their phone or something like yeah. that or doing work on their laptop or whatever. Yeah. And we all do it a bit. We've all got things to do. But unless you're going to be right up front and greeting people and saying hello and making eye contact with people, then yeah. that's what you're going to get. So now we're at the show. So yeah. And this is what you need to do. You need to be positive. You know what? Cry cry, and you cry alone. Yeah. <laughs> and, and people are coming. It's amazing. People are coming and have a you know, it's a bad experience on the way in or, you know, their posters fall down, they're in a bad mood, they'll have a bad show. Yeah. Um, smile and the world smiles with you. Mm. And, and a big smile and um, and being a bit out, you know, just being outwardly positive yep. makes a big difference. Like every show, how's, how's the your, show going? It's going great. To your body language, to everything Fantastic. about you. Yeah. You, you, know, you, you know, you can tell me whether it's going well or not, but to a visitor, the show's going great. Mm. We're getting a wonderful response. Mm. If you stand there and go, oh, my feet are a bit sore, oh, the show's a bit slow this year. I mean, Really? Mm. You're saying that to a visitor. You're saying that to someone who's going to buy your franchise. Yeah. That, it's not that, very that, positive, is it? It's not positive. It's a great show. By the way, you know, have you ever thought about, um, you know, do you like cleaning pools? Have you ever yeah. thought about a pool works franchise? Yeah, th there's no doubt. When you're there, my view on those expos is you are on. You're on. You are on. You're like on. It's like. It's not the time to complain no, about things that you happen are, at home. You it's are on show. And you know what? It's the weekend and, you know, you don't need to check your emails. And check the football score. You don't need to check the football score. Okay, all right. And you are you're on. If you want to go and have something to eat or check your emails, and and you've got enough have stuff, a break. Go yeah. outside. Go and have a break. Go outside in the sunshine. Have a break. Mm. Don't do it on the stand. It's people. Yeah. People don't want to interrupt you. If you're on the phone, they won't yeah. interrupt you. Like it sends walk, a message, doesn't it? Yeah, that says you're not interested. But also, people are polite. They don't want to interrupt you if they think you're doing something. Mm. Even so, if they are interested. Even if they are interested. Mm. Oh, I'll come back. Well, maybe they will. Maybe they won't. But that's not the image that you, that you want to portray. Um, these things are all started to come together. It's about being positive and engaging. Yeah. But it's not a general conversation. You're not there to talk about the footy or the weather. You're actually there to talk about your franchise. So you need to keep steering it back to that. Mm -hmm. And you need to keep um, talking about the benefits to them of being involved with your franchise. Mm. You also really want to check them out too to see if they're, they're the right person. Yeah, you, you want to understand them and what they're looking for and what's appropriate mm. or whatever. So you want your leads to be good quality. Mm. You know, where do you live? Do you want to work? You know, most people want to work around where they live. Um, you know, are, are you physically able to do this kind of job? Um, do, you, do you have a driver's licence? You know, does your partner support you in this? Um, mm. What do you need to know before you, you know, you, you choose a franchise? These are questions you want to ask and you want to be able to record them somehow. Now, we did try and bring in an, an automated system recently, but exhibitors didn't really want it. Most of them have their own forms. Is that a scanning sort scanning of thing? System. Yeah. 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 Yeah, most most of them seem to have their own um, on their iPad or something like yeah. that where they're filling in people in the right. forms into their own CRM. An, iP an iPad's quite neat. Yeah. But it can be easier just to have paper forms as well. Yep. Either way, um, you know, have some set things you need to ask. You know, how much you think you're investing in a franchise? It's not a rude question. If mm. they're looking for a... Uh, a mowing franchise, that's different to opening a retail store. You need to know where, where they sit budget-wise. Mm. Mm. So these are questions you want to ask. And and then at the end of that, the other thing, you need to disengage. You don't want to spend more than 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes with one person because other people are walking past. So you've, yes. got, to, you've got to disengage. And uh, also at this initial meet, you can say too much. Yeah, you can true. keep trying too hard. Leave You're a little like, bit on the table. He, geez, he was trying hard, wasn't he? Yeah, because um, you want to set up at the next meeting. Yeah, yeah. Which, which find is, out you know, more. What's the call to action? All right, yeah. we're gonna. I'm gonna call you in a few days, or I'm gonna take you to a store, or I'm gonna send you an information pack. Have a plan of action, and and that's really bringing that 
discussion to a close. Mm. I reckon the only re- real reason to bring a brochure to a show is to get rid of people. Yeah, so take that and... Take that. <laughs> All right, I'll give you a call. Because you actually, you're better off to get their details and send them a brochure mm. or email them a mm. brochure. Um, I reckon it's you know, one of the few reasons to have a physical brochure at the show. Yeah, yeah. Thanks get, rid of, get rid of people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can see it can sometimes be challenging. Yeah. Okay, so we're, the show's, we've, we've done the show now. Follow up. So that all important mm. follow up, what does that look like in the end in best practice as right. you've seen it? Can I slip one really, really important point in here before you we can. get to the follow up? You can. For goodness sake, do not pack up early. I know, that's your thing. You're always on patrol. It's, <laughs> I, it's the worst part of my job. I hate doing it. Yeah. But it's so important because we've got people coming to the show at sort of two or three o'clock, spending a few hours in there. The show closes at five and we've got people at four o'clock starting to get a little bit antsy mm. and and you know, we actually literally have people pack up an hour early. It's absurd. You have spent four, five, six thousand dollars yeah. or more to be there. And you've got 14 opening hours across it's the only, weekend. It's only about 14 hours. Yeah. And it's only a two-day show. It used to be three days. We brought it back to two days. Really? What is so important that you need to get out of there? An hour early. Do you, do you get home and go, wow, I, I won that. I'm home. I'm home. You know, an hour early. It's like, and you. And I understand flights and things like that, but that's a but, planning thing. But that's a planning thing. Do not book a six or seven o'clock flight when the show closes at five o'clock. Book the yeah. eight or nine o'clock flight. Yeah. Don't leave early because what's happening is you're packing up. You look unprofessional. Mm. You are doing exactly the wrong thing by the exhibitors around you because they are still there working and they're looking at you, thinking you, you're destroying this show. You are rude, you're unprofessional, it's absurd. What is so important that you need to get out of here an hour early? And um, it's dangerous. You know, you're rolling posters up on the floor, someone's going to slip over. You will be sued. I'll be sued as well, which is why I do the patrol. Mm. We'll all be sued if someone trips over. Your own staff will trip over because they're not focused and they're they're doing all this stuff quickly. Um, The guards will not let you wheel a trolley through an open show because it's not actually legal to be doing that. It's not safe. Um... Just wait till 5 o'clock because, you know what, if you're packing up at 4.30, from 3.30 on, mm. you're thinking about it. I know. <laughs> um, I've got exhibitors in the food show who sell $20,000 ovens. Yeah. And, you know, even in that show some people pack up early. Not a lot, but some do. These, these guys and girls will demonstrate, talk, do everything until 5 o'clock. They will not stop. Even if there's no one there, they will keep going. And they tell me they sell ovens in those last 10 minutes of the show every single year. Mm. Uh, and they're looking around at their competitors sort of who are all doing that, you know, looking. Getting ready. Yeah. You know what, just wait till 5 o'clock. Mm. I think some people get a bit scared that at 5 o'clock the place is going to go haywire. Mm. But you've been at our shows. It's very we calm. We keep it's it very much. calm. Yeah, there's no rush. 5 o'clock we just close the doors. Mm. We move people out slowly. It's very calm. There's no traffic rush. You know, we, mm. we do it in a really controlled system. We don't start pulling carpet up or doing any of that stuff mm. until, you know, well after the exhibitors are gone. By 6 o'clock, everyone's gone and it's done in a really relaxed way and a really friendly way. Um, you know, I've had, I've had unfortunately, a few arguments with people over the years. And I, 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 it's, it's really unfortunate that, mm. that it happens. We, we've even talked about if people do it, that we don't let them come back to the show. That's mm. how seriously we take it. Wow. But... You know, we don't want to be the policeman. No, no. We actually want to work with people, make sure they have a good show. A good show is just the last hour, it's quiet, just stay with it, stay committed, stay focused. You'll enjoy it more. You won't be stressed. Mm. And you know what? If we close it at 4 o'clock, the same thing will happen yeah, at 3 o'clock. Yeah, everyone will be 3 o'clock. So it's only two days. We want to get full value. Don't, right. please don't pack up early. All right, so don't pack up early. early. No. All right, okay, <laughs> let's move on to follow-up. I got that out of my. <laughs> Did you get that out of your system? <laughs> follow up's the most. Follow up oh, no. is so important, yeah. and you need to. You know, you need to. This is true of any trade show. You need to dedicate, you know, as much or more time to follow up as you do to the show itself. Yep. And if you're going overseas to do shows, you know, you need to stay after the show mm. and do follow up, because follow up is where you are converting people. At the show, you're having the conversations, you're moving them in their own minds along the journey. But the follow up is where you'll you'll start to lock them into the next steps. And so follow-up starts with engaging with people through the show in the first place, yep. capturing the details, asking some of those qualifying questions so that you're walking away with decent leads. Now, there are, there are some exhibitors who um, do that brilliantly and they literally get on the phone that night 
Yep. They all go back yeah, to I've hotel room. I've heard that. And they call. And you know what? Good on them. Good on them. That's 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 like really. Would they be more the American exhibitors? Yeah, because they're really good at what they do. Yeah, they're very. Yes, they are very. Um, and people want to be followed up. Very process oriented, and yeah. I think many Australians would probably think, "Whoa, gosh, that's a bit. That's, that's a, a bit, bit salesy, isn't it? A bit full on, golly." But, but you know what, I they, reckon, as a, I think about that now, as a person looking to buy a business, they probably get off the phone and say, "Wow, how he just called me. How impressive! He just called that? me and said, you know, thank you for chopping in today, jibbing in today, mm. and." How would you get home okay and away yeah. you go? Away you That's go. a stronger connection straight away. Strong connection, very professional, very efficient, and it just shows what a well-run business it is. Mm. Uh, I really I re- really admire those um, th- those people for doing that. But, you know, even the next few days. And so that, that's about doing the right thing at the show, getting the details. It's also about being ready before the show. So mm-hmm. we're going back to now before the show again. Right, let's have a talk about follow-up. How are we going to follow up? Mm. Well, we need to have some templates. We need to have some, you know, online brochures and maybe we need to organise a store tour, organise that before the show because you get back to your office. Yeah. In the old days, it used to be a pile of business cards. Nowadays, yeah. it's a pile of scans or it's or it's forms or it's or it's iPad. Um, and you go, well, what are we going to do with all this? If you talked about it before, that's, that's easier. And just get, get an email out to everyone, saw you at the show, we're going to give you a call. And then you can call. Yeah, so setting up that expectation. Yeah, and and um, keep in contact with them because it's a journey. As we yep. said a few times, it is a journey. You know, you're not going to sell them in one call. You're not going to sell them probably in one show, but yeah. it's a journey and just keep that going. And if they, oh, look, I'm not quite ready yet. When will you be ready? Well, schedule a call. Most of us have a CRM system now. Yep. Schedule a call in two months, three yeah. months. Say, so I saw you a couple of months at the show. It's amazing how people say, oh, oh, we met these people at the show and it wasn't until six months later. Well, yeah, schedule calls, I, it's, schedule it's calls. funny when you mention that. That it makes me thinking that really the success of exhibiting at a franchise expo is only as good as a brand's nurturing and engagement funnel mm. that they yeah. have afterwards. Absolutely. Um, so that's not yeah. just the one they create for the show, but their ongoing mm. nurturing engagement funnel. Mm. Because then you look a year down the track, and they can look at it and track it and go, "These four leads who bought came in from the expo." Yeah. But it might take two years for them to come mm. through. They, they they may well, and it's. You don't always know where the lead comes from or what True. the one thing. I think they say by the time you buy a Mercedes, you would have had mm. 10 million exposures to Mercedes in yeah. different ways, cars driving past, ads, magazine ads, television mm. ads. By the time you actually buy it, you don't know which one made you do it. Mm. No, Franchising is not quite <laughs> the, the Mercedes. same. Mercedes. But yeah. um, they will have seen your stores maybe out in the road. Yeah. Uh, they might have They might have seen an ad somewhere. Um, they might have seen a van drive past. But then when seen they come a, to the show. Seen a video on social. They might have seen a video on social. Mm. And, um, you know, something's going to go in their yep. head and they're going to say, right, I'm ready now. Mm. And you want to be, be the one following up. So really critical and, and complementary marketing. You know, what, you know, the great work you do with, with, with EDMs and, and with videos, um, all, all, those, all those things you can do, they're all complementary. They're not yeah, it's a mix. one or the other. It's a mix. It's a mix. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I think <laughs> we've... we've uh, done a masterclass on how to exhibit best at a franchise expo. Excellent. Not a single PowerPoint slide. No, no, no. Nothing necessary. <laughs> All right. Tim Collett, Specialised Events, Franchise and Business Opportunities Expo. Thanks very much for joining us. An absolute pleasure. I'll see you all at the show. Excellent. And that's it for this version of the Franchise Everything podcast. If you like what we're doing here and you'd like more information, please jump in there, jump into the comments, ask questions. Also, make sure you review and like it and that sort of stuff in whatever streaming platform you're watching or listening to it on. And we'll catch you again in the next episode.